What do you really need to go camping? More specifically, what do you need if you're going camping as part of a solo road trip? Well, actually the answers are very similar other than a few items. If you're new to camping, wow, I know it can be really intimidating and it may feel like you're just trying to join some sort of weird subculture that you don't know anything about. Everything feels a little bit scary and unnerving, but yet exciting. It's a brand new adventure at the very least and you need information. There are lots of ways to go about camping and the goal today is to keep it super simple and really just show you the basics. I'm gonna show you what I do and then you can figure out what resonates with you and find your own way. I'm Bing from Wonderbing Travel, road tripper through 46 states and counting, and over 50,000 miles on the road with Lexi, my golden retriever. And we do a lot of camping. I'm also author of the new number one bestseller, There's Wonder Around the Bend, which I wrote to help people seek freedom and wonder through the beautiful experience of solo road tripping. So welcome to my Summer of Wonder series where each week I'm sharing and teaching all the goodies from my book. Please subscribe to our channel and also grab the book in the link below. You won't regret it. One of the most fun parts of camping is figuring out where you're going to stay. So if you're not really sure where to start with that, check out this video where I did a deep dive into four of the major options that you have for different types of camping, especially for beginners. So when you camp, there are really just a few things that you need. You need a way to organize your stuff, you need a place to sleep, you need a plan to take care of your food, and then you need some good lighting options. How you do any of that is completely up to you, and if you wanna pack half of your kitchen the first time because that makes you feel better, then by all means do it. Also, please stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna share with you the two things that I will not go camping without. One of them is for safety, and the other thing is just absolutely for comfort, and well worth it. Staying organized when you're camping, especially if it's part of a long road trip, is so important. I hate being frustrated and it's well worth putting in the time to get extra organized before I go. So I've learned over the years that my best strategy always involves clear plastic bins. And so since we're just talking about camping, I'm going to show you my camping bins. So I really just have a very simple system and I've learned this over the years. I like this three drawer bin because it does not take up a lot of space in the car and I can divide things pretty well. Right, in the top drawer, I keep plates, silverware, also uh, little appliances. I have a um, wine opener in here as well as a can opener. I also keep this type of thing as well. The second one is storage for storage. So it's a little messy right now. I'm just getting ready to prep for my trip so we don't have things all in order. So I keep the very basic Tupperware type things in here. This is where I keep my garbage bags. And I also keep um, plastic bags. This is where I'll put aluminum foil and saran wrap type stuff as well. And then the bottom one is where, for now at least, I keep all of my sprays and cleaning products will go in here as well, sunscreen. The other thing that I will add to this will be all of my spare batteries. This bucket isn't too inspiring at the moment, but I just would call it my camping supplies. So this is where I might keep my tent stakes, my mallet, a pair of gloves, I would keep an extension cord in here. Right now there's just a few things in here, citronella candles, I have some tent patching stuff. I have extra lights. I also would put my lanterns and flashlights in here as well. Okay, the third bin, which I don't actually have out here at all right now, would be for dry goods. So all of my non-perishable food that doesn't need to be refrigerated. So that would include things like granola bars and cereal, other kinds of snacks. And I'm very partial to clear because when I go on these epic road trips, I wanna be able to see without having to open everything. And it's much easier to have the right bin and also to just generally see what I'm looking for a lot easier if it's a clear one. And really that's all there is to the organization. It's not that much. Here's all my equipment for setting up my tent. So tent itself is right here. This is what it looks like. It's the right line gear SUV tent and it has been awesome. Tent poles here. I highly recommend getting a mallet. I highly recommend having gloves for putting up the tent. And then absolutely go get yourself some good tent poles. These are not the ones that come with the tent. The ones that come with the tent are horrible. They will not work very long at all, if at all. That's it. That's my tent gear. 
Putting up the tent really doesn't take very long. It does take a little bit of practice. I highly recommend that if you get yourself a tent that you put it up at home or in a local park or someplace where you have some space so that you can practice and become really comfortable with it. I can easily put this up by myself, but I did have to try it a time or two before I felt confident with it. It helps me each year to do this to familiarize myself again since it's been a while since I put it up just to make sure that I remember exactly how to do it. There are some tethers that are attached to the car to help it stay connected and it also has this really cool feature where it hugs the top of the tailgate when it's in the air and really makes it feel nice and snug as you'll see from the inside. You can see it has open access to my whole car which is really nice and I can I set it up so that I can get to everything that I need inside here. Okay looks like we could use a bit of a cleaning in here so I'm going to do that and then set the rest of it up so you can see what it looks like when it's all done. Okay, so welcome to my tent. I'm super excited that I got it put up today partially for this video and I always put it up for a day before I leave so that I can make sure that everything is working properly and that nothing is broken and there's no leaks or holes or anything like that. So I'm happy to report that all is 100% great and I would like to give you a little tour. This is actually the sixth year I've had this tent. I absolutely love it. The only thing I've ever had to do was to replace the tent poles um, and also I've replaced a stake or two along the way. Come on in. Welcome to my tent. I absolutely love it. I bought this tent because I really wanted something that was going to make me feel safe. And so having it attached to my SUV absolutely does the trick. It's a pretty large tent. This is a queen size air mattress and I'm partial to a flannel fitted sheet on top. It just makes me feel clean and nice. I don't like sleeping directly on the air mattress for sure. I have a really nice sleeping bag. It is a 25 degree level sleeping bag, so it's all, I always feel very snug. My favorite thing about my sleeping bag is that it has a hood. So my pillow fits right inside, which means my head fits right inside. And on those nights that I'm out and it is quite cold, I can just go right under the hood and it is amazing. A few other notes about my tent. I have a really cool fan slash light here. So this is wonderful. It does provide enough light for the tent. All of these of course zip up so that it is completely private. And of course I added the fun little lights at some point because it just seemed great. And they are on a remote control. From a safety perspective, I always sleep with a few items right next to me. So I have the remote control that operates the lights. I would always keep a flashlight next to me, my car keys, and my phone. And one other item that I'm going to tell you about at the end. You definitely don't have to have a tent that attaches to your SUV to go camping. There are so many different types of tents and some people prefer not to use an air mattress. They'd rather just sleep on a sleeping pad. Some people sleep in their car. You absolutely just do what suits you. This is my setup. It's taken me quite a while to figure out what works for me and for Lexi, and this for me is perfect. Let's go talk about food. When you're talking about food on a road trip and camping, it really comes down to two main things, food that you need to keep cold and food that you want to make hot. Of course, there's also just dry goods like we talked about before, but these are the two trickier things, right? How do you keep your food cold? How do you make your food hot? Well, this is my solution to those things. There are lots of other coolers out there. There's lots of other ways to heat your food. This is what I do. So I'm a two cooler girl. I have the larger Arctic cooler that sits in the back of my car and then I get out for camping and that's where the majority of my food is. And then the coho is more for drinks and smaller snacks and things. As far as the heating part goes, some campsites have electrical hookups. So if you have something electrical, like I will confess, I'm very partial to a chai latte in the morning. And the very best way to do that is to have a frother. I know, it's like not a camping thing, but I can't help it. It's my one big indulgence pretty much every day. 
And so I will take my frother everywhere I go in hopes that I can plug it in. I don't have a generator or anything. I'm not there yet, but I love having my frother. In addition to that, I do a little bit of cooking. Now, because I road trip and I tend to be moving on every day, I don't carry like raw meat or anything like that. I do a lot of my cooking ahead of time. And I'm going to do a video here in another week or two that is all about my food prep. So make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss that one. When I do cook, I have a little propane stove, which I'll show you, and I uh, use a cast iron skillet, which I can also just put right on the fire, which is awesome. Those things are indestructible. And if you really needed it for a weapon, it would absolutely fit the bill. And then I just take a small little two quart saucepan if I need to heat up water or wanna boil water for some reason. Okay, this is my little Coleman Gladiator stove. It is propane, obviously. It just takes one of these little guys and it's so easy to use. Plus it folds up like a suitcase and it doesn't take up much room in the car whatsoever. This is where I can absolutely put my small two quart saucepan on here for heating up water, or I can use my cast iron, either one. Okay, that leads me to water. And I do carry usually four gallon jugs of water that I can refill as I go. Super important to make sure you've got all the water that you need. Some campsites will have water available. You just need to read the signs and make sure that it is water that you can drink and not just water that you can wash in. Of course, if you if you boil any water, then it's perfectly fine. All right, let's just talk real quickly about lighting. As you know, in my tent, I have the overhead light and fan. I also have the remote controlled little cute lights, but then it's very important to have a good flashlight. This is a super heavy duty one, love this one. I also have this lantern, which is battery powered and solar powered. It also has a USB charger, so it's got all the things. And it also has a little flashing red light if I would need that as well. So this is great, really lights up the whole campsite, but where there's light, there's bugs. Citronella candles that I use to keep the bugs away. I also have one other cute little light that I use. This can hang as well, and it's just a push light. So this is a nice handy dandy one. I don't have a headlamp. I know that's a thing and everybody has a headlamp, but I don't have a headlamp and I've gotten along just fine without him. I'm one of those weird people, it's the way I brought, was brought up, I think, is that I'm used to being out at night and perfectly content to not have a light unless it's so dark you can't see your hand in front of your face because once your eyes adjust, there's really, you can see very well at night and I would rather do that than shine a light where I'm blinding myself from everything else. So while we're talking about light, we should talk about fire because what is a campsite without a fire? So a few things about fire. Usually you can buy firewood at the campsites that you're going to. I always carry a lighter with me. Sometimes I have matches also. So I am not one to make more work for myself when I'm camping. I definitely use fire starter. Not all the time, but if it's not really dry, then I will use little ones. They come in like little bricks. You can buy these. They're very inexpensive. You can get them at Walmart or whatever. I also will carry some cardboard with me and a little bit of wood like this or just some sticks just so that I have a place to get started. Some campgrounds will have signs that say, do not use wood that is not there. So you just have to abide by their rules. But you gotta have a fire. And I love having a fire. I think my favorite time to have a fire is actually in the morning. I love getting up in the cool of the morning and it gets light very early and just building a little bit of a smudge as my grandma would say. And that's a great way to start the day. Okay, now we're down to those two items that I told you I would never go camping without. So let's go check them out. They're actually both in my tent. The first one is a safety item. I keep it in my tent, but I also keep it with me when I'm hiking or any time that I'm just on my own. And I usually wear it on a lanyard around my neck and it's the birdie whistle. If you haven't seen this before, it's a great little product. I will spare you the noise, but the way it works is you wear it around your neck. And if you need to use it as an alarm, you just pull down on it and it emits this shrieking loud, horrible whistle and flashes light as well. So it definitely will scare something or somebody off and it alerts others around you that you might need some help. I've sampled it, so I know it makes this horrible noise, but I've never had any kind of issue where I would need it. Okay, so the second item is something that I didn't have until about the fourth year I was camping. 
And what I found was that at night, especially in higher elevations and getting closer to the fall or whatever, it can get really cold at night. And it might be down in the 30s. It might be in the 80s during the day, 30s at night. And there were nights where I was honestly just very cold. Despite my sleeping bag, despite whatever I'm wearing, I would just be pretty cold. And that sometimes even includes with Lexi sleeping practically on top of me. I finally figured out why I was cold. And it was because the air in my air mattress is cold and it would get cold of course at night and then it just would come right through the mattress and I would be freezing and so this is my solution and it works like a dream so under my sleeping bag and under my flannel fitted sheet I have this very nice comfy mattress pad it's not just a little cover. It actually has some depth to it. It's super soft. It keeps my air mattress clean and it also keeps me from getting cold during the night. I have slept so much better ever since I bought this. So any gear that I'm recommending today or that you saw here, I will put the links below if they're Amazon products. Yes, indeed, Lexi and I do get a little bit of money for that. So thank you for supporting our business through those. We really appreciate it. Camping has become such a huge part of the wonder of road tripping for me. Lexi and I absolutely love camping. These are just the basics. This is what I do. You figure out what works best for you and start small. Figure out where you love, figure out what you need. Take more stuff than you need the first time. Who cares? Just enjoy yourself. It's so much fun. And just a reminder to follow along for the Summer of Wonder as Lexi and I are getting ready to embark on that month-long road trip where I will be vlogging and providing live video almost every single day as part of our road trip and also book tour that we're doing while we're out west. If you haven't gotten your copy yet of There's Wonder Around the Bend, grab it in the link below. Come along for the ride. We'll be so glad to have you. And Lexi and I will see you on the road.